In this video, you're going to learn how to load in a truss in Revit along with all of the necessary supporting families. Then we're going to be placing that truss and modifying its cords. And finally, we're going to be adjusting the coping so the truss is going to look exactly how it should in real life. Let's go. Of course, before we get started, make sure to check out BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. There I have over 140 hours of content dedicated to Revit. So if you're serious about learning Revit, that's definitely the best place to be. So now, without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. And as you can see, we have a couple of columns that we have already placed. They are 12 meters apart. And now I'm just going to be placing a truss on top of these. So to do that, let's go to the level two floor plan. So on top of those two columns, I'm going to zoom in and we can see them here. So to place a truss, first we need to go to the structure tab then go to the structure panel and click on the truss tool. Now, in this case, we have a truss loaded in, so it's going to start that command. Or alternatively, if you don't have any trusses loaded in, it's going to give you this message. So you just simply need to click yes to load in a truss. In this particular case, because I'm not happy with the truss I have loaded in, I'm going to click on load family to load it in. In the load family menu, you want to scroll down to structural trusses. You can see that here. And then I'm just going to click on the first one just once. And in this preview window, we can see how that looks. Now I can simply use the arrow keys. So up and down arrow keys to toggle through this list. And in that preview window, it's going to show you exactly how the truss looks. In this case, I want to load in this Howie Gable truss six panel. So I'm just going to leave it selected and hit open. That's going to load in a truss and now we can place it. In this case, I'm just going to zoom in to the first column and then place it here at its edge. I'm going to go to the other side and then click on the other edge. And we have that truss placed. Now I can go back to the 3D view and see what that looks like. Obviously, this isn't the result that we want. So now I'm going to hit the escape key a couple of times. And now we need to modify this truss. Now, the reason for this issue is because the truss itself, the truss family is just a simple structural diagram that then uses beams that are loaded into the project to complete the truss form. Now, in this case, we already have some beams loaded in. And if I click on the beam command, you can see we have some beam shapes here. And I think it's using the largest one here. And I definitely don't like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to load in some beams, which then this truss family can use in order to adjust it and modify it properly. To load in the beams, you can simply go here to the insert tab, go to load family, and then then we're going to go back one level from our trusses, go to structural framing, open that up, then we're going to go to steel. And here I'm going to scroll all the way down to the universal beam, then I'm going to hit open. And this is going to open up the specify types menu. In the specify types menu, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And here I'm going to first select the smallest beam that I'm going to be loading in, which is going to be the 152. Then I'm going to hold the control key and I'm going to add to selection the 203, the uh, 305, and then finally the uh, 356. I'm then going to just click OK, and it's going to load in those four beams. So now if I go back to structure and go to the beam tool, you can see that now we have these four universal beams loaded in. Now we have to hit the escape key a few times, select the truss, and then I'm going to go to edit type. This is going to open up the type properties. And here I have opened up this preview so we can see uh, the truss itself segmented into the top cord, vertical webs, diagonal webs and bottom cords. Here we can adjust all of those. So you simply need to find the structural framing type. And then in this case, for the top cords, I'm going to use the universal uh, beam 305. For the vertical webs, I'm going to set the type 
to Universal Beam 203. For the diagonal webs, it's going to be the smallest one. And then finally, for the bottom cord, it's going to be the largest one that we have loaded in. Now we can simply hit apply and OK. And this is the result. We can already see that this looks much better, but we still have these gaps and now it's time to fix those. Now at this point, it's really important to stress that this is something that should be done at the very end of your design process. So if you think that there is still a chance that this truss might be resized, then don't follow the next steps yet. Leave that kind of for the end once you're already certain that the truss will not be resized because some of the changes that we're going to be making are, are going to make this truss less parametric, so making changes is going to be a lot more difficult. Okay, with that in mind, now what I'm going to do is make a big cross selection to grab the entire truss. Go to filter, and here you just want to uncheck the structural truss, but we're going to leave selected the structural framing, so the beams that uh, create this truss. I'm going to hit apply and OK. And now I just want to go to the modify panel and click on the unpin tool. This is going to unpin all of those beams. This is that kind of irreversible damage that we're making. OK, so now what we want to do is we want to extend all of these elements to go kind of uh, and fill out the rest of this gap. Now I'm going to turn on thin lines just to see things a bit better. Hover over one of the beams, hit the tab key once or twice to highlight it, and then click to select. Now I can just extend this beam all the way through. Actually, I can go a bit less, so something like this. Again, I'm just going to use the tab key to highlight this beam now and extend it further here and here as well something like this. And then it's just a matter of repeating that for the rest of these. Now this truss looks a lot better, but we still have to cope the uh, overlap of the beams that we have here. So for that, we're going to be using the cope tool, which is on the modify tab. Here on the geometry panel, we see the cope tool. So you just click on that. And first you want to select the beam that's being coped and then the one that it's being coped by. So let me demonstrate. You click on the beam that's supposed to be coped or cut, and then you click on the beam that's cutting it. And this is the result. I'm just going to repeat that here and for example here. Now in some cases like this one here, uh, this beam uh, or this beam is going to be coped by two beams. So first I'm just going to cope this and do it like that. And in this case I want to cope this beam so I'm just going to select it first and now we have kind of double cope on that beam. And again repeat this for the rest of them. And as you can see, now our beams have been successfully coped and our truss looks really good. Now, as a, an extra tip at the end, uh, something that you'll notice here is that we still have a bit of a gap in between uh, the beams. So even with coping, it does tend to leave this gap. Now, if you want to fix that, what you can do is you can, again, select the entire truss like this with a big cross selection. Then you want to go to filter and just uncheck the structural truss, hit apply and OK. And here, what you'll notice now after coping, it's going to show a coping parameter. Now, in some cases, it's not going to show it depending on what you've selected. So here, if I just remove this beam, now it will appear. So as you can see, because this one hasn't been coped, so that's why it didn't show that coping distance. So I've just removed it by holding the shift key and clicking on it. So here the coping distance is set to 20 millimeters. And if I just check uh, or set this to zero and hit enter and apply, okay, it's just going to apply that coping. And now if we zoom in, you can see that now everything is aligned perfectly exactly how uh, we actually want it to be. So now our 
uh, truss looks perfect exactly how it would in real life. Uh, thank you for watching and if you want to learn more about Revit structure I actually have two courses on Revit reinforced concrete structures and Revit steel structures. You can find both of those courses on my website balkanarctic.com. I'm just going to be linking that up in the cards above for you to check it out. Also if you want to check out all of my Revit project files like this trust that we have here but also all of my Revit project files which is over 500 files I upload all of those on my Patreon page so if you want to check that out I'm going to be leaving a link to that as well up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video.